All right, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Good morning again. Welcome to the first of two Give Back Tahoe workshops that we'll be hosting. I am Caroline Crappy with TTCF and Lisa Galperin is also on the line. Um, Lisa, do you wanna start sharing the slides? So I'm just gonna start by giving a quick TTCF and Give Back Tahoe overview. And then I will hand it over to Lisa and she'll be giving you the rundown of Mighty Cause and just getting started, um, getting your page up and running for this year. And then we'll open it up for some questions. So as most of you probably already know, we are the Tahoe Truckee Community Foundation and we have been hosting Give Back Tahoe since 2014. Our mission is to connect people and opportunities, generating resources to build a more caring, creative, and effective community. So this will be the eighth annual Give Back Tahoe end of year fundraising campaign. Um, the important dates that you wanna remember, we'll be kicking off with on Giving Tuesday on November 30th. And then November 30th to December 14th is the challenge grant period where you will be eligible to win more um, through donations raised during that time. And a lot of our marketing efforts will be focused around those dates and we encourage you to do the same. However, the entire giving season will be the entire month. And we just found that a lot of donors um, are still giving throughout the end of the year. So we wanna keep it open through the campaign. So the platform is available all year round, but the um, donations during that period are the only ones that will count towards the challenge grants or just through the Give Back Tahoe metrics. Last year, we had 50 nonprofits registered and on Giving Tuesday alone, we raised 132,000 from more than 1200 donors. And then during the entire campaign, uh, 428,000 from more than 1400 donors. And that was our best year yet. And then, like I said, we wanna encourage you to use the platform all year round uh, for donations and also volunteer recruitment. And we did make some changes to the campaign last year. So the first one being that um, the platform was open all year round and we were encouraging um, donors and uh, nonprofits to use it for that purpose. Um, in the challenge grants, we focus on unique donors versus amount raised. And a lot of that was just due to COVID and a lot of the year round fundraising that all of us were doing. So we also added in some non-competitive random grants, again, just hoping that more people would walk away with additional money. And we shortened the challenge grant period. So it went from being a month to two weeks because um, some of the feedback that we heard was a lot of nonprofits were doing their own fundraising campaign and it just got to be a lot managing too, and also just having it last a month long during such a busy time. And lastly, we lowered the donation minimum from $50 to $5. And a lot of that again, went back to just year round fundraising and concerns about donor fatigue. Um, but last year at the end of the campaign, we did send around a feedback to all the participants and we received positive feedback on all of these changes. So we plan to keep them again for this year. And now I will hand it over to Lisa. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you. Uh, so we're just gonna be going over some key reminders and basics about the platform um, in case you haven't used it since last year's Give Back Tahoe season. Uh, so the first step this year to get started is to of course, register your nonprofit. Right now, registration is open. So if you go to givebacktahoe.org, you'll see the main CTA or call to action button is to register. So you can just click that button and complete your registration. Registration deadline is October 14th. Uh, so it's a quick and easy survey. The questions are similar to what they were last year. But if you have any questions about the registration form, please feel free to reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to help. To go over the fees for this year, uh, so the overall transaction fee on the platform is broken up into two parts. So there is a credit card processing fee or ACH fee, which I'll get to in a second. And there is also a platform fee. 
So with credit card processing all together, the total fee is 4.9% plus 30 cents. And as you see in the image above uh, or on your screen, that's broken down into a 2.9% plus 30 cent credit card processing fee, which goes straight to the credit card processors. American Express, it's a little bit more, um, it's a little slightly higher. And then the platform fee is 2%. Um, so that's on any credit card processing. And of course, as you know, donors always have the ability to cover this processing fee um, if they want to. In addition to credit card processing, uh, we also have ACH processing. I believe we had that last year, uh, but just to go over that again. So ACH processing is actually, uh, it's available for donations that are $50 or above. If the donation is below $50, a donor is not gonna see the ability to donate uh, via ACH. Uh, and it's a really great option for donors that are donating a large amount because the transaction fees are actually slightly lower. So there is still a 2% platform fee. However, you would replace that 2.9 credit card, 2.9% plus 30 cent credit card processing fee with a 1% uh, ACH fee and also a um, $1.50 fixed fee per transaction. So what that means is that if someone were to donate uh, twice via ACH, that $1.50 would actually uh, be removed from their second transaction. But overall, then that total processing fee is capped at $5. So if you have a donor that's donating $1,000, it's actually uh, much lower the total processing fees for them um, if they donate via ACH. Um, and to note that cap, that $5 cap does not apply to the 2% platform fee. And if you have any questions about uh, the fees, pricing, feel free to uh, let us know in the chat or we can talk about that after the slides when we go over any questions. So one of the things we talk about every single year is the story that you're gonna share for this year's Tahoe campaign. And we always recommend um, at Mighty Cause, since we do host many giving days, is for organizations to start thinking about that at the beginning of the campaign that they're trying to build out. What's the story that you're going to share this year about Give Back Tahoe? Um, as 2020 happened in 2021, there was a lot that happened just in your community. A lot has happened with all of the fires and smoke. So how has that impacted your organization? What can you share about your organization to your donors that's different than what you have shared last year? So you can do that through your organization page and through your inline text editor where you can add and update the images that you've had, the text that you've had. Maybe you wanna update your banner image. Um, there's a custom tab if you wanna utilize that. There's a lot that you can um, really change or update on your page uh, based off you know, the changes of your organization this year. And we'll also get into um, fundraising, more fundraising strategies in the next webinar. So just to brush up on some of that, those fundraising strategies, though, uh, one of the things that we also really encourage organizations to do so, especially at the beginning when you're in the planning phases, is to activate your ambassadors. So what does that mean? That can look like a lot of different things, but you want to utilize the support network that you have now and help them participate in your giving day campaign. Most um, notably or most commonly that comes, um, that looks like a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign where you ask, um, you know, people in your network that could be your board of directors, your board members to fundraise on behalf of your organization. Like I said, we'll go into that more in the strategies webinar, but the reason why that we have seen that be really effective for organizations is because it allows your network to share the story of your organization in a different way and to a different network of people that maybe you wouldn't have been able to reach. Um, so it can be a really powerful, effective tool. We have those tools available if that's something that you are considering doing or you're interested in doing on the platform. 
As well, in addition to peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising, you wanna make sure that you are also sharing your organization on all social platforms. Part of also activating your ambassadors is to also reach out to your network and see who can support your organization at that time. Um, it's really great to start thinking about your communications plan. Um, if you are short staffed, if you are need additional help, again, feel free to reach out to your network um, utilize a volunteer website to see who can help in those areas where you're lacking. Um, so you want to make sure that you're using all of your channels to spread the word about Give Back Tahoe. We do have templates in the toolkit that you can utilize for email, for social media. So all you have to do is copy and paste that uh, text into your social or emails. And you want to also start thinking about who you want to reach out to. So you want to segment your communication by donor groups. Um, so maybe you want to reach out to a certain donor group or volunteer base to ask them to run a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. Or maybe if you're looking for matches, uh, looking to some of your donors to see who would be willing to provide a match for Give Back Tahoe. So you want to start thinking about those segments, because that can actually be really helpful in figuring out what strategies you're going to have in place for your giving campaign. Um, and of course, whenever reaching out to all of your channels, making sure that they have a direct link to your organization page, they know exactly where to go and what they need to do when, um, when sent that information. So as I mentioned just a slide before, uh, there are toolkit resources available to you. So in our toolkit, we'll have another training that goes into more of the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, matching grants, how do you get them, what kind of matches, et cetera, all of those details we'll go into further in more detail. We have uh, links to great tips, how-tos, guides, and templates, as well as images that you can utilize for your communications and marketing. Um, the next webinar or workshop will be on October 13th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So uh, you can sign up for that um, today after the webinar. Um, one of the thing that I one of the things I did want to highlight this year is that um, we will be resetting metrics for all organizations that register. So you don't have to worry about that step when, after you register. So you won't see that immediately, but after you register, we will be resetting metrics for you before the event happens. So don't have to worry about that step or figuring that out on your page. So uh, if you run into any technical questions, confused about anything, uh, concerned about anything, uh, please reach out to our support team. As I mentioned, we host several giving days. So we have supported so many organizations and have received every question you can imagine. So please reach out because that's what we're here for. We want to make sure that this is a seamless and easy process for you. So reach out to our support team. Um, and we will also post this workshop afterwards on the toolkit. So if you need this information, you'll find that on the toolkit as well. Okay, so I want to make sure that we go through any questions that anyone may have. So um, if you want to utilize the chat, if you have any questions about this year's Give Back Tahoe campaign, um, Carol and I can help answer any questions anyone may have. Um, I have a quick question. Yeah. This, is, this is Mary with the Wampler Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, so I was creating my registration and I'm pretty much ready to submit that. Uh -huh. It asked about matching funds. And right now I have one commitment from an individual for some matching funds, but I have another one that I think I might get. Did, does it matter? Should I just put in what I know I have for sure? if I come up with another match that's after October 14th, does it make a difference in, in this process? In the registration form? Yeah. Uh, 
Caroline, do you want to answer that um, in regards to impacting? Do you need that information? Um, I don't see that impacting. I think um, as long as it is up and running and properly set up by the time the campaign is live, I would imagine that is fine. So I have 5,000 right now and I'm expecting another potentially 10,000, but I don't have a firm commitment for it. So if I put in 5,000 and hit submit, and then later I get another 10,000 matching, I do. Do I update it on the page? Yep, then you will do it um, at the time and we can help you as that gets closer. Um, there's also, I think a detailed article in the nonprofit toolkit about that, but- um, Okay. So you have that, yeah, I wouldn't put it in right now if it's not confirmed. Okay, perfect. Any other questions? So I do have one more question. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what, so I've built out my page, uh, a lot of it, it's not completely done yet. Um, once I register, does that become visible? When do these pages become visible to the public? Like I went back to the Give Back Tahoe and don't see us listed yet, but I haven't submitted the registration. So does that show up once I hit submit? Yeah, yeah. So there, your your organization will be in the search um, once you're approved, and and if you haven't, if you didn't participate last year, if this is your first time, should it be is. already in. Okay, yeah. So then you will be added to the search. Okay. Um, so if a donor were to come, they would find you know your organization there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. anyone have any other questions that we could help answer? I think that means you did a great job, Lisa. <laughs> I hope so. But uh, if there's anything that comes up afterwards, you know, again, please feel to reach out to us. I know I have those moments where I'm like, oh, I should have answered. I should have asked a question. But didn't, didn't come to mind at that time. Um, Okay, well, if no one has any other questions, um, please, yes, we will be sharing the slide. So we'll share a video, we'll share the video of this on the toolkit, and we'll also have a PDF copy that you can download afterwards that if you want to share with anyone on your team, that will be available. So all of that will be available. And yes, yeah, Caroline said, we have a lot of also support articles on different topics. If there's something that you want to find to like send to your team or anything, please let us know and we can send that over to you. And um, please let us know how best we can support you into this upcoming giving season. As we all know, it gets really chaotic really soon. So let us know how we can help them. Um, and I think everyone already has my email, but Caroline at TTCF in case you have any additional questions for me. But thanks so much for joining everyone and we hope to see you on October 13th. Have a good day, everyone. Bye. Bye.